Hello there the internet, hope you're all well, thank you very much for stopping by. I have another product review for you today. Now normally I stick to doing tech reviews and uh, although we're focusing on a fish tank here, strictly speaking this is tech. We're looking today at the Fluval 307 external canister filter. It's not a new to the market product but it is new to me. Um, you see a couple of, uh, couple of weeks ago I had a bit of a disaster, came, in, came into the dining room Notice that the uh, fish tank water level was a little bit low. I'd only uh, cleaned it out a couple of days before and, and uh, it was a bit suspiciously low. And as I approached the tank, my feet started to squidge on the carpet. Not a good sign. You see, these flu valve tanks, they, they do have a bit of a weak spot around this section here where the uh, inlet and outlet hose is going and it, uh, uh, and it vacuums onto the uh, top of the canister, which I'll go into a bit more detail later in the video. But um, what I discovered was that the, um, uh, the gasket, there's, there's like a rubber seal that sits between that and that, had pretty much perished and it was just leaking water over the top and it needed replacing. As the uh, tank itself, the filter was uh, at that time four and a half years old and my previous one to that, which was a 206 model, only lasted three years, I thought perhaps it's time to replace the whole lot because inside there you're going to get a few extra gubbins, you're going to get some um, filter media in there as well and everything's brand new so instead of wasting money on um, buying just a new gasket which would mean 10 to 15 quid I thought you know what the heck let's just replace the whole lot so I've gone ahead and I bought the 307 the slightly newer model of the 306 in there uh, I'm not too sure what the differences are going to be I still look at that and I think that doesn't look massively improved to how it was before so I'm hoping it's a little bit at least better while I'm going to put a new filter into there, I thought, you know what, I'm going to get one of these as well, which is the Fluval um, Ultraviolet Inline Clarifier. I've, been, uh, I've had this in my Amazon wish list for about three years now, and I keep on watching the prices, and it finally dipped down to a price, I thought, you know what, I'm going to get that. Um, so I'm going to stick that in at the same time I'm going to do that, I'm going to wire it all up in there, because you, you need to fit it in with all the, uh, the pipes, and the pipes that are in, in there with the, the old filter are pretty manky so I thought you know we're gonna get some new new pipes in there let's just set it all up it's time to do it also I don't know if you can see that but my spray bar up there that is from my original tank so this tank is nine years old coming up to ten years old and uh, that's the original spray bar in there and it's it's seen better days I think after nine years it's worth changing it so I've got a new spray bar to put in there as well so I'm gonna have a uh, have a bit of a uh, clean up of the tank. The uh, the plants that you see in there are pretty tired because of the fish that we have in there. We uh, uh, we have a couple of fish in there that are actually as old as the tank. They're nine years old. We've got um, there's a uh, a yo-yo loach. Some people call them Pakistani loach, um, which is nine years old. In fact, I can see him. He's right. He's underneath the log at the moment. Um, and we've also we originally had two bristlenose plex um, bubble and bobble for fans of retro gaming. Uh, uh, Bubble uh, died after about two years, but uh, Bobble, uh, well he lives on, in that big rock just there and he's about that big, he's absolutely massive and um, also in there there's a uh, albino plaque which turned out to be a female plaque and um, has spawned lots and lots and lots of babies, um, hundreds of babies in fact. We've still got plenty of plex in there, there's probably about 30 plex in there and um, if you put real plants in there they just devour everything. Uh, I spent about £60 on a whole load of new, new plants and after a month all gone. So that's why I have plastic plants in there, okay they're not as visually appealing as real plants but we have plastic plants but they do get a bit manky after a year, year and a half so I'm going to get some new plants as well to go in there at some point in the next few weeks as well. But we're going to open this up now, see what's in there and uh, then I'm going to uh, set it all up and then another week or so, two weeks down the line maybe, I should come back, do another video and uh, we'll see how we get on with it, see if it's any better or, as I'm expecting, exactly the same as the previous 306 model. Okay, let's start with uh, opening up the uh, UVC clarifier first. Fortunately, I've got my uh, Swiss Army knife along for the uh, for the roadshow. But let's have a look inside what's in here. And I've never actually seen one of these before. It's got that small. That's a lot smaller than I think it's going to be. That's useful. Oh, good. Right. Okay. So here we have some instructions, which I'm sure I'll look at at some point. A couple of fixing screws so I can mount it to the back of the uh, the cabinet. And what's in there? That is, looks like a power cable, and oh, hang on a second, that's a two pin power cable. Let's hope there's an adapter in there, otherwise, we're snookered. Right, okay, we've got 
that's your UVC clarifier. Okay, it's a relatively dinky little thing. Okay, so that plugs into that, like so. And I do hope there's a three pin adapter in there, or I'd be really asking you. Could... No, there isn't. That's 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 really useful, that is. Uh, do I even have, I do have an adapter somewhere, but that's not a good start, is it really? All right, and what's that? That is, oh, that's some kind of timer set up. Oh, that probably goes in, oh, I see, that goes in line on, in there, actually. So that plugs into there, and that end plugs into there. Right, okay. Well, <laughs> let's see if we've got an adapter that always we've uh, we've already uh, snookered ourselves straight away. That's that's not good, right? And uh, that'll be the pipe to go in line between between that and the uh, clarifier. Okay, right. That's that's one thing. Not there. Right. Let's have a look at the uh, spray bar kit. Now this should be pretty pretty basic in there. There should only be a couple of pieces in it. Well, that's a lot blacker than it was before. That's, on that one, it's quite uh, quite uh, quite clear, but that's very opaque. In fact, that's just totally black. That is. Hmm. I don't like that quite so much, but I, I could see the build-up of muck in that one. That's uh, not quite so good. But uh, there's the uh, two bits. There should be a couple of linking pieces in here, right? Oh, the suckers. Now, the reason why you can see that's dropped down is that it's because the suckers are nine years old and they're just not sucking to the side of the tank. Anymore. So, a couple of new suckers in, or three new suckers. Should be yeah, three. That's right. And hopefully a couple of connection part pieces. Oh, I'm dropping bits all over the place here, right? So they're the bits that cl clamp. They snap into there and they go into the sucker bits. Okay, lovely stuff. And then now then this this is where this differs in design to mine. Mine it sits quite low in the tank, which means the water level level has to be quite low as well. Because when it comes into the tank, it's just got a L-shaped piece, whereas that has got a U-bend, so it can come in on the using the uh, using that. That'll fit over there. That'll come into the tank, and then it goes back up again like that. So I can have the spray bar at a higher level, which means I can put more water in there and maximise the volume of the tank. That's better. Okay, and I should there it is. There it is. There's a single little piece there to connect. One end goes on there. One end goes on there. Right, lovely stuff. Okay, that's that's how I hoped it would be. Right, let's have a look at the next bit, shall we? Okay, right, the 307 external canister filter. Let's have a look at what we've got in here. Sticky bit. Like I said, this has been out for a few years now, and uh, while the 306 has its failings, and I'm pretty sure the 307 is going to have the same failings. Um, it's still the most ubiquitous filter there is. The filter media is so easy to get hold of for this one. I get stuff off Amazon, whether it's the actual Fluval um, branded stuff or some uh, third party stuff like sponges. And these are the different stages of filtration. That's the Fluval Biofoam Max, the Fluval Biofoam, the Fluval Biofoam Plus, all that's mechanical. Um, then you've got the biological filtration of the Biomax rings, then chemical filtration, things like ammonia, carbon, and phosphate. And then finally, you've got the polishing pads, which is actually mechanical filtration. Right then, what we've got in here. So, right, this is, good. this is good. We have all new pipes. Okay, 306, 307 pipes, so they're the same pipes that on that one, that's lovely, excellent. A new, now I'm, I'm not going to need all of this, I don't think. Uh, one of this will be the outlet pipe, which goes into there. That is the inlet pipe, which is on the right hand side of my tank there. That bit, it, it sits like that. That bit there stops any fish getting sucked up into the uh, uh, into the filter. That's that there. Hmm. Yeah, let's, let's go into it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you this. All right. This, is what I've never liked the design of this because because of this bit here. I'll show you that. That bit there is susceptible to breakage because your in uh, inlet and outlet pipes come from the tank into there, and then that sits onto the top of this bit here, which I'll show you in a moment. And it works by clamping that over a bit of plastic inside there, and over time that 
it, feel, it feels weak even now. I mean, you, you could over push that and snap it very easily. I snapped it on my original 206 and that one was very close to snapping and uh, never was confident on, on it. Uh, I was never confident about cleaning the fish tank uh, later in evening time, just in case this did snap on me. I had no chance to go to the uh, local fish shop and get some more, uh, get a replacement for it. But I never liked that. It's always been a weak point because you snap that down and then that lever there, that controls the flow, how much water is coming out of the, out of the, uh, the outlet or the spray bottle in my case. And uh, I don't like that. I wish Fluval would come up with a much better way of doing that because there's a lot of pressure when you're pushing down to get the correct seal on that. It doesn't never locate quite right. You always think it's going to snap at any point. I don't like that at all and it's still not been replaced. So um, this is a new tank, but it's got the same failings as far as I can see. Right, let's have a look at the actual tank itself. Right, they've refined the design ever so slightly. We've got a few instruction manuals and stuff in here. They've re refined it ever so slightly. That is a little bit more positive than previously. So you pull it out like that and like that and then the whole thing should pop up like that. Right. It's not massively dis different to how it is on there, but it just looks a little bit uh, better. In there somewhere will be a rubber, unless it's separately, there's a rubber gasket and that's what failed on that one, which caused the flood, which is why it's sitting in a washing up bowl in there at the moment, just in case it does it again. Um, this is the, where the impeller, lines if I can get this open it's ever so slightly different to the previous one but no, I say ever so slightly different it's just cleaner than mine all right that's your impeller blade it's sort of magnetized and sits on that little little sweetie stick there so it pops in there that's what uh, drives the uh, drives the pump so put that in there snap that back in place uh, always make sure you clean that out as you're uh, when you do clean the clean the filter out it will get a lot of crud built up in there but Generally speaking, that is very, very similar to the previous one. Uh, inside here, now I notice there are a few differences on the uh, on the pictures I've seen on Amazon. But um, right, it comes with some mil um, some filter media, which is useful. Right, this is what we've got in here. Everything stuck together in their little baggies. Right, this thing always floats away as well. When you put everything together, once you put all your media in there, you clean it all out, put it back together again, and you, you put that on top. That's a bit more positive. The one on there, it just sat, sat on top of the uh, the basket. And as soon as you start putting water in, you know it floated to the top. You knew that that cap had floated to the very, very top. But there's a little bit of a tab on there. That's a, that's a little bit better. I thought I'd lay out all the media that you get inside the uh, Fluval 307 packaging. This is all included with your filter. And that's new, this, leak, this, this handle thing to bring the whole lot out. You know, you have to just reach in and grab the whole lot. Because I'm swapping filters, rather than setting up an entirely new aquarium, what I've done is I've taken away half of the filter media that came with the new 307 filter and exchanged it for half of the filter media that came out of my old 306 system. Uh, because I'd only had it uh, probably about three weeks since I last cleaned it out, everything was in pretty decent order. So what I've done here is I've just taken away half of the media and replaced it, oh, oh the Biomax there, that's the important one. I've just put in all of the old media that was in the old filter because that's the really critical one. In here I've got the carbon, I've got the phosphate that came with the new one, but I've also used ammonia pads which I tend to use in my aquarium filters. All right, okie dokie, so that goes in there. All that one should go back in there, here we go, it goes back in there, then the last, uh, last day that goes on top of there, foam in the way. That then sits, make sure it's on the right way, it isn't, it's that way. And it snaps into place. That, that just feels a bit more positive than that one, actually. That, that's probably a little bit better. Um, okay, right. I'm going to drain down, get this one installed. Not sure what I'm going to do about this. That's that's a bit of a bit of a disappointment. In fact, it's not got a three-pin plug on it. And uh, see how we get on. All right, I'll catch you in a moment. 
So this was the fish tank with the old Fluval 306 system set up. We're now going to swap it out and we've got the 307 system all set up ready to go. You can see how the tubes still have to bend through that hole. Uh, you can't get a straight exit from the uh, filter. That's the UVC, the clarifier there, tubing going up over the top of the, uh, the glass of the uh, tank in through that hole. And then as we drop down you can see the U-bend going into the spray bar i don't put the uh, end bar that's the end bar there there is a reason behind doing that because when you first turn on a um, a filter whether it's the very first time or after you've cleaned it out when you first turn it on there's always a bit of crud in the system because it's, it's drawn water through and it's going to spit it back out into the spray bar and if it's closed off you just get gunk built up straight away now what i'm doing here is i'm priming the tank the instruction says three or four times i've done it six times and i can hear the water coming down it's going to drop the water level ever so slightly and it took about 45 seconds maybe a minute for it all to uh, fill into the uh, into the filter underneath the tank there uh, now what I'm about to do I'm just making sure that it's all finished um, uh, all the water's finished coming down I'm going to uh, plug it in and I'm going to get me uh, my little bucket to go over the uh, end of the spray bar to catch any uh, crud that might get dragged through and then I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to turn the volume up here you'll see what happens yeah not a lot is actually happening it's making a noise, it sounds like it's trying to pull something through, like the, uh, the media inside is bouncing around, but nothing is actually coming out of the spray bar, no water is coming through the system. And this is quite a common occurrence. Of all the years I've had them, perhaps one in every four times that you re-plug in the filter, this will happen. And what I'm about to do is, I, I know what it is, I, I know the fault, what it's going to be. So I'm just uh, going to unplug that um, Aquastop valve. Um, you'll always get a bit of, bit of fluid that comes out of it because the, uh, um, the, the pipe is now into the water. So uh, I'm just, just dabbing it down there. But I'm going to pull out the filter and I'm just going to lift off the top. And when I lift off the top, you won't be able to see it on the camera, it's just behind my shoulder. But the, the lid that I was waving around earlier on, which has got a, a tab on it on one side to keep it from floating away, still floats away it uh, it doesn't uh, entirely lift off but one end of it raises up and it's almost as though it's like blocking the outlet or inlet tube or something and what i'm just going to do i'm just going to lift off the top here and i'm just going to push it back down again so that it's flush on top of the media basket the, the media baskets aren't overfilled they're uh, they're certainly not there they're all where they should be but as soon as you put water into it it lifts all the baskets up so what i've done now is i've just pushed everything down to make sure that they're in the right place i'm going to put the uh, after stop valve back on again and uh, we're going to try again. So the aqua stop valve is in. I've pushed the red lever down, locked it all into place. I'm now opening the grey lever. That allows the water to go out the outlet pipe through the UVC clarifier and should be coming out of the uh, spray bar when I turn it on. So uh, I forgot to put the uh, bucket over the end of the spray bar, but fortunately nothing happens. I've turned it on and it's now starting to come through. I say it's starting to come through. It's quite low the flow. You can just see the flow. I'll zoom in on it in a moment. But I'm about to put the uh, the end of the uh, spray bar on. But the flow of water is just trickling out there. There's not a lot coming out, coming out. And the reason behind that is because there's a lot of air still in the system. You'll always get a bit of air in the system. I've uh, turned the volume up as well so you can hear the uh, uh, the change in the uh, the tone of the sound, which is the uh, water going up and down. All I've done there is I've just uh, closed and then reopened the uh, the grey valve. Um, and it, uh, it, it, it almost like creates a bit more of a vacuum to push some more of the air through. But this will happen, certainly for the first time you do it, it, it carried on doing this for about five minutes. But when I put the end of the spray bar on, it, it closes the end off and it uh, builds up the pressure inside the uh, outlet tube. So you can see the water coming out. But as you can also see, it, it disappears, comes back, disappears, comes back. It does, it does this, like I said, for about five minutes because there is a lot of air inside the filter for the first time you use it that it needs to purge out. So you'll hear the tone of the motor going up and down, you'll hear the uh, tone of the water changing and you'll be able to obviously see it as well. But once it's up and running and it's in this state, I'm quite com confident it's working okay. I'm just going to uh, check and make sure there's no, uh, no fluid leaking around either the, uh, the gasket or the uh, aqua stop valve and just after after finish this off i check make sure there's no water coming out of the uvc as well but this is what the tank looked like uh, on the friday before i changed it three weeks ago so that's obviously with the older plants with the new plants it's looking crisp and clear and all the fish are happy and that at the end of the day is the most important thing okay i'm back 
That last bit of the video was filmed about three weeks ago. That was uh, about third week in May, shortly after the um, uh, the canister tank and the uh, UVC clarifier appeared from Amazon. Um, it's now 13th of June, I think it is now, and uh, we're going through a heat wave. There's a fly buzzing around that keeps irritating me. Um, dog is basking out in the garden, and uh, it's quite hot, and I'm recovering from a cold, so if my voice sounds a bit odd and I cough a bit, do, do apologise. But everything so far, three weeks down the line, has gone well. All the fish that were in the tank before I changed the filter are all still in the tank. That's the first thing. Um, as you can see, I've also changed all the plants, um, or bar well, one of them. Um, but they they only got replaced um, three days ago, in fact. Uh, so they're nice, bright, fresh out the packet. They're all. It, it looks lovely when it's like this. Give it another 18 months, they'll all be crudded up again, I'm sure. But um, no, the tank looks absolutely superb at the moment. Very happy with it. The um, the filter itself. Well, what can I say? It's basically exactly the same as the. 306 and the 206 before that there's other than very minor refinements very little has changed inside the canister you've got the uh, the little red lever thing that pulls all the baskets out at once that's different other than that inside very little difference externally the clasps that um, pull the uh, pull the lid down onto the uh, onto the base unit and uh, sort of squeezes the uh, rubber gasket they're a bit um, a bit more substantial, they feel a bit bit more uh, positive, they do. That's a plus. The aqua stop valve thing, though, there barely any difference. It's, it's virtually identical. When, when I hold them up next to each other, there was the, um, the actual red plastic lever, the, uh, the indentations were on the opposite side to what the old one were. That was the only real difference to it. It still feels as brittle, it still feels like it's the weak point of the whole thing. And I really do wish Fuval would change it because it just doesn't feel robust enough. Um, and then the only other change, other than there's a little uh, rubber feet to lift the um, lift the tank up off the ground, which is quite useful actually because it stops vibrations from the motor passing through into the cabinet. That's that's a plus. Um, but the, the priming handle is ever slightly. It's now it's like a uh, it's a ring pull almost. You can pull up and down. Uh, whereas on the previous it was a uh, basically a knob you pulled out, and which you could, in theory if you've got wet hands you could slip off. Yeah. That. It's a minor change, but otherwise there is very, very little change between the 306 and the 307. Why do I keep buying them then? As I mentioned before, it's ubiquitous. It's probably, I, I don't know if it is the number one selling um, um, filter for uh, aquariums, freshwater aquariums, but every fish shop you go to, all those Maidenhead Aquatics, your local fish shops, they all sell them. Amazon have got, got, the in droves, they've got all the filter media, and that's the main thing. You'll need to make sure that which, whichever filter you get, you need to make sure that you can get hold of the filter media because that is the thing that's going to be required over the next three, four years, however long it lasts. You are going to need, need to be able to go out and buy replacement filter media, and that's where this is the king. You can get it from absolutely anywhere, and there's plenty of third party companies that make cheaper versions, as I've mentioned with the. Um, uh, the bio phone, the rectangular ones. I still recommend you get in the Fluvar branded uh, media for the um, uh, the bio filtration, the chemical filtration, and the um, uh, the little bio orbs. I never remember what they're called. Um, so it has its flaws. Hello, dog. You visited me from the garden. Um, in fact, Storm, come here. Come over. Here. Come on. Oh, there you go. Sit down. Dog girl. Yeah, she's she's a hot doggy at the moment. It's about 26 degrees outside, so I've just been squirting her with a hose pipe. But the um, the filter, it's it has its flaws from previous and it's gonna have its flaws going forward. Three or four years that gasket is gonna give up. It says it says in the brochure in the instructions manual that after two years you uh, you ought to replace it, maybe even one year, I think it says. Um, that's the thing that failed on the previous one. That's the actual thing that failed, which made me go out and buy a new one. So at the end of the day, although the filter has its faults, it really does have its faults, I still recommend it. It's, 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 it's difficult for me to say that because it does have its faults and I, I really do get irritated by it at times. But 
I've never, I've not found a better alternative. I did look at the Fluval's own other offering, the I think it's the FX range, the uh, cylindrical ones. Um, really, really came close to uh, going for those, but um, I don't actually think the one that was suitable for my tank actually fit in that uh, that recess there. It's quite quite narrow that is. Um, those ones they just they suit my application. Um, the whole, the way I've got this whole tank set up with the kitchen over there and ferrying backwards forward with the uh, the water, it could have been a nightmare. But this filter, it just fits my my own personal circumstances very very well. Um, I've had them now for it's over nine years, coming up to ten years. This is now the third one. So uh, let's say I've got nine years use out of the previous previous two. So four and a half years. Each one costs. Depending on which size you go for, 100, 150 pounds, depending on what the offers are on at the time. Um, the the numbers, say in this case the uh, 307, the 300 refers to the literage of your tank. Like I said at the start of this film, this is a 200 litre tank, and I could get away with the 200 litre, the 206 when I first set the fish tank up, but. I felt that it was being pushed to its absolute limit, and I do have a well-stocked tank, should I say. Um, and although I do have the, having all these plex are fantastic because they they clean up after the, all the other fish, really, they really do. So although I do get crud coming through, it's not as bad as it really could be. Um, but I always felt the 200, the 206 was being pushed to its limit. It was always having to work overtime to keep the tank in pristine condition. That's why I went for the 300 litre. Um, it's quite a step up in cost, running cost wise, not only from the um, uh, the fact that it's a more powerful motor, but the fact that the, you basically need twice as much media. On the 100 series and the 200 series, you have baskets which take one sachet of carbon, for example, or one polishing pad, or one Biomax um, foam. Whereas on this, you've got each basket is split into two, so you need two two lots of media. So running costs can get quite expensive. So go to that 200 to 300 can be a, can be a bit of a step up in cost. But if you're setting up a tank for the first time, I can't think of many other alternatives that I would recommend you go for. As a, certainly as a starter filter, filtration system, yeah, it's good. It's got its flaws, but it it really does do the job, and you'll be able to continue buying the media. Regarding the UVC inline clarifier, it's hard really for me to tell you what it's doing, if it's doing anything. It's working. I've got I've had it on 24 hours for these first three weeks. I'm going to drop it down to 12 hours because obviously that'll double the life of its uh, bulb. So that's the thing you've got to remember. Once the bulb, which is rated for so many hours, expires you can't replace that bulb you've got to replace the whole lot so 50 55 quid whatever it's going to cost you you need to replace the whole unit and it's not just the the inconvenience of replacing the whole unit and the expense but it's the fact that you've got to unplumb it from all the pipe work you've put together because setting all this up it was quite a challenge because um Fluval are quite explicit in their uh, instructions that you're not meant to have any slack in the hoses going from, from that into the um, outlet and also coming from the, the inlet. They, you, they want you to have as straight a line as possible, which is almost impossible because it's got to go up and over and it's got to go round and uh, dog leg through the hole in the back of the tank. And then when you introduce the clarifier, you're, you're then having to cut down pipes. And that's one thing to mention about the um, the 307 is that you get one long length of hose and you've got to make sure of your dimensions because you've got to, it, they're not the easiest things to manipulate um, it's not like a piece of string where you can just drape it over and work out what the length it is it's quite a rigid thing and when you twist in it and turn it it wants to go back to its original shape so it's always twanging away so fortunately I've obviously got the previous hoses and I just laid, laid them out so I knew how long those uh, pipes need to be but you've got to be very careful before you make your cut in the incision to trim it down, make sure you got it right because it's not the most generous of pipe length you get. I mean, ideally, I'd have wanted to put the filter over on that side so I could then put the inline clarifier somewhere in the middle as it shows on the instructions and on the box, and then the pipe goes up. But then to do that, I also need a longer length of pipe coming back down from the uh, from the intake, and there wasn't enough pipe in the in the box. So that's something to consider. It's, you've got to get in, get clear in your head how you're going to wire this up or pipe it or plumb it all in. It's, um, you've got to, got to get your brain around it before you start making any incisions. Um, 
Also, you've got to be careful of how many sockets you've got. Because as you can see under there, I've got four sockets under there, and they were all full at the start of this process. You've got the filter, I've got um, the air pump, which is, you can obviously, that's what's making all the noise. Um, I've got the, the through valve heater in the back of there, and uh, I've also got the, obviously, the light as well. So that's four, four things that have been powered on that extension, which comes on over there. I didn't have enough then for the UVC clarifier, that obviously needs its own power. So fortunately the cable is quite long, it just reaches the socket that's over in the corner of the room there. So I didn't need to do much, but uh, just bear that in mind when you're plumbing all this in. You've, got, you've really got to make an active conscious decision how you're going to wire all this up. Um, but is it actually doing anything? The tank looks pretty clear, but it's only been three weeks since it was all set up. And to be honest, my, my own cleaning regime, um, it's usually every month I will do a partial water change. Um, I will take the water down to, I usually take it down to just a, just a book below the level of the top of the, uh, the TARDIS. Um, so it's, it's probably, uh, I think what it is, about 40 litres of water I take out, is it something like that, and replace that. And then every two months I'll do a complete um, media change. Well, not a complete media change, obviously don't do, don't do a complete media change, that's one thing. Um, that, that's another thing. When I was setting this up, obviously, if you're setting it up for the first time, use all the media that's in there, um, and then cycle the tank. You need to make sure all your, all your ammonia, nitrate, and nitrate, nitrate, and nitrite levels are correct before you introduce any fish. Very, very important. Go away and do some research on that. Don't take my word for it. Um, but if you are replacing an existing filter, make sure you use some of the old filter media specifically the um, uh, the bio orb things because that's where all of the uh, good bacteria and things live but what I've done as I showed you on the video is I took half of the um, the bio max um, uh, foams the uh, all three different types of foams uh, I used half of the ones that were in the previous tank which it had been about three weeks since I previously cleaned it out so they've got, still got a bit of life in them um, but it just gives it gives uh, opportunity for all the good bacteria to um, repopulate onto the new stuff. That is very important, otherwise you'll get spikes of ammonia and all sorts of things going on and you quickly wipe out your tank. Um, obviously whatever I've done seems to have worked because as I say I've not lost any fish. The same number of fish have come out that went in and that's the most important thing, that the welfare of the fish. Um, but because it's only been three weeks, has the UV clarifier actually done anything? Because it's very rare I see a tail off in the water quality. But what I will say is it's, it's sparklingly clean. It's, I don't recall it looking as bright and as vivid as that. It made a difference obviously putting the, the nice new plants in. Because that, the, the colour of those, albeit artificial plants, really does bring the colour out in the fish. If you've got a dark tank and algae and muckiness, whatever, the, the, the colours of the fish dim, they don't really glow. Since putting those plants in there, wow, it's, it, look, it looks smashing, it really does. So, is it doing anything? I hope it is. I, I honestly, I can't tell you whether it's beneficial or not. It, it's not doing anything any harm. Um, okay, it's going to cost me a few quid uh, every year to run it, but <laughs> I'd rather it, it be in there than not be in there. Um, I, I think it's beneficial, but I honestly cannot sit here and tell you that it's, it's a wonderful thing because I physically cannot see any difference. It's working, it's doing something, but what? I don't know. I honestly don't know. So it's hard for me to recommend it. Uh, if you uh, if you feel that you could uh, benefit from it and you've got a, got a bit of extra spare cash to um, just to finish off your tank, it's it's one of those nice to have things. It's not everything here: the filter, the the air stones, the uh, the heater. The light, everything that's in there, that's the most important thing to get right. The UVC clarifier, it's, it's an add-on, nice to have. But I honestly can't tell you if it's doing any good or not. Um, last thing then, the spray bar. The previous spray, spray bar was in there for nine years and it was proper cruddy. The, um, the rubber that connects the, uh, the two, two pipes in the middle and the, uh, uh, the joint at the end, it was practically solid. There was, there was no flexibility left in that rubber. It was algae all over the place, crudded up. It needed changing. Um, the new one is completely black, as is the um, the intake pipe for the uh, the 307. Um, 
I'm on the fence on this one because I actually prefer it being clear because I can see when there's build up of muck inside because you will get build up of muck inside and I like to be able to see that so I can address the situation quickly. Um, others might say I'd rather not see that crud because it could build up crud over time um, and it doesn't affect the performance so I'd rather not see it until it does affect the performance which you will see anyway because the spray bar won't spray water out anymore. I'd rather see it and deal with it. I can understand other people wanting to hide it. That's by the way. Um, but the U-Bend connection, that's brilliant because the, my water level is very rarely above sort of that sort of level. Um, I'm up here, I've got an extra, about an extra inch of water depth, which when you square it out and cube it up, that's quite a lot of water. So it's given extra volume of space for the fish to move around. So that's a positive thing. I'm happy with that. Um, it's certainly better than just the normal output thing you get with that, which is just a little little nozzle that just spits all the water back in there. Spray bars aerate the water. It's, it it um, complements the, the air stones that are, you see on the bubbles there. It's, it oxygenates the tank and because I've got my plants in there, you don't get as much oxygen flow in the, in the tank. So it's all positive. Everything that that spray bar does is positive and it's, it spreads the clean water across the entire tank rather than just spitting it out in one corner. A spray bar is a really, really good investment and it's cheap. It's, I can't even remember what it was, like 15, 20 quid or whatever. It's, it's worth the money, whatever it costs. It's, it's a good, good purchase. Can't fault that at all. It's spot on. So overall, I'm very, very happy with how everything's turned out. Uh, put aside several hours to set, set all this up. I did it on a, on a Saturday morning and it, uh, it, it took me well into Saturday afternoon before I finished it. Um, but the fish are happy, the tank looks great, so I'm happy. It's a bit of an expense. There are flaws with the 307, which were evident on the 306. I really do wish Fuva would address it. Maybe the 308 will finally get around to sorting it. The, the, uh, the quick start thing, the, the connection thing is a weak point. The gasket will need change and it will fail over time and when it does fail it's going to chuck water over the top of it and onto your carpet as I've found. But the media is easy to come by, it's relatively cheap to run. Um, so, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with it. It could be better, but I don't think there are any better solutions out there on the market. So, yeah, you flew well. See you next time and thanks for watching. Take care.